I'm not confident with my post discipline. <laughs> When I went about piecing this vlog together, I was just gonna go down the how. So how do you become confident? What's the best thing to do? Um, but then I just thought, why? What is it about confidence um, that we kind of need and must have to make us desirable to other people? Whether that is the opposite sex, if you're after a relationship, whether that is to nail a business opportunity. Why? Number one, I believe it instructs people how to feel about you. How do you instruct people how to feel about you? How do you show people that you're well liked? Do you go to them and say, hey, look how many followers I've got on Instagram? No, that'll be, be weird. It's just amazing how many people completely speak about themselves in a derogatory way. It's, it's crap, it's bullshit, why, why do it? They, they speak about themselves and they speak about their, their lives in such a derogatory way. And it's just like, why? There's enough people in this world that are trying to put us down, whether it's haters on Instagram, whether it's haters on any social media website, whether it's, whether it's um, haters out in the street, you know, whether it's um, someone trying to compete against you, whether it's different classes of people. Yeah, what well, the point is, it instructs people how to feel about you and how do you do that? So what I would do is just... This sounds really hippie, but kind of love everybody. So just just go in there and just be happy with yourself and just, you know, hold your head up high, have a smile. I went to CrossFit this morning and it was like 6 o'clock in the morning, so 6 a.m. And uh, they were just like, I just cracked a few jokes and stuff, just bounced in. And it was just like, then what are you so happy for? It's 6 in the morning, what's wrong with you? Just like, dude, it's fine, it's happy, but I'm happy about life, it's fine. And I give the guy a nice big cuddle, so it's okay, it's all good. That is the ritual that I created in my morning. Aim to make at least three people smile a day. Going back to the people speaking derogatory about themselves, they don't even realise they're doing it. Like It just comes out naturally. In fact, catch yourself or catch the people um, speaking about themselves or yourself in a derogatory way. Just catch yourself and just think, well, actually, what am I doing? Let's say something nice for once. The worst person in the world to bully you is, is yourself. Forget people at work, forget people at school. It's the worst person. Is you because you're with yourself 24 7 right number two leadership there's going to be certain times in your life where you're going to have to, where you're going to lead people and people are going to want to follow you to have that confidence to have that self-belief people are going to be thinking oh yeah this guy this girl knows what they're talking about i'm going to i'm going to follow them now i'm not suggesting that i'm a leader in every single aspect of my life far from it i i like to lead um but i also like to to follow um, especially if it's something I'm not familiar with um, and when I do like to follow people I like them to come across as confident if they don't believe in themselves why should I believe in them that's when there is self-respect comes on you are stop <laughs> putting yourself down seriously stop talking about your life in a derogatory way stop talking about yourself in a derogatory way if you don't like it change it number three is positive thoughts well, this is what I was talking about in the box this morning and I got up and I'm just thinking all positive and just being all happy and loud and silly. Because I don't mind what people think about me. I mean, people are going to hate on you, okay? Regardless of what you do. You can instruct them all you want. You can help them. You can help guide them to feel positively about you. But if they're going to hate you, they're going to hate you. If they're going to dislike you, they're going to dislike you. There's nothing you can do about it. And guess what? It's their right to do so. They have every single right to hate on you. Because that's their belief. And that's fine. In fact, I see it as kind of like a... A bit of a challenge. I think it's cool when people do that because I can actually show up and show them how I actually am and who I actually am. And if they still persist in, in hating upon me, then I know that it's perception is projection. So I know that they're unhappy with something in themselves and they're projecting it onto me. That's true 99% of the time, actually. Again, another topic. We all know that our thoughts influence our emotion and our emotion influences our behavior and or our action or inaction in that case. So whatever we think about, we are. If I was really happy in the morning, then I would like to think that I'm making other people happy in the morning as well. Whereas if I just went in there all shoulders down, droopy, sad, tired, like, oh, I can't be asked to do this, that's going to spread. And an emotion, a state, spreads. Emotions are contagious. Self-confident people believe in themselves. They feel like they don't have to put others down to make themselves feel better. People that do that are really, really vulnerable and have a really, really low self-esteem. And I'm not hating on them. I think it's a bit sad. Obviously, they're living through some old destructive self-beliefs or some old limiting beliefs that they've gone through throughout their lives. And they're judging their life and other people's lives on experiences that have happened to them, which is not fair on the people they're judging and it's not fair on them too. I am arrogant if I was to put you guys down, if I was to say oh, I'm better than you anyway, just to give myself a boost, low self-esteem and low self-respect for me to do that, I'd have to knock someone down to, to boost myself up. 
So two types, you've got confident and self-confident. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about confident. Confidence, I believe, is attributed to a certain skill or a certain talent. For example, me, I'm pretty good at making a cup of tea, pretty good at bouldering, yeah. CrossFit, I'm confident in the gym. There are other things I'm not that confident about. For example, doing this, and I've had to practice this and practice this. You may have seen the vlogs on YouTube or, or Instagram, and I started quite low with low numbers, but <laughs> I was a bit shy and I was a bit like, oh God, what if people think I'm a douche? You know, what if they judge me? End of the day thought, you know, just just go ahead and do it and just see what happens. A confident footballer is going to go onto the pitch and they're going to know what they're capable of. They're going to know what they're going to do and they're going to be able to deal with any situation. Now, do they have self-confidence? Well, self-confidence, I believe, is attributed to an area of someone's life that they're interested in. So can they adapt to, to things quickly? Can they Are they confident in their own belief? For example, coming back to the football, if they are, if they come to... Um, point in the game when there's a penalty or there's a there's a slide tackle or something goes wrong or they're losing 3-0 are they able to control the game nope they can't control the game because that's completely outside their control they can't control the other players on the pitch they can't control where the ball goes um when other people have possession um they can't control uh the weather you know they can't control these things but what they can control is their emotions so they can control what that means to them they can control what a penalty means to them they can control um what losing three nil means to them they can either let it consume them or they can actually you know what this is fine i've been like this in this situation before i know what to do to get out of it and they just keep on going they don't let their emotions get the better of them again with the businessman if they go into a meeting and they they need to uh win a contract and things aren't going down too well they're out of rapport they're out of sync with the other person that's opposite them or they're they're, they're unhappy with the product or something like that. They are able to control their emotions to get the best result to succeed. That is self-confidence, to actually be able to control yourself to get the best outcome possible. And a self-confidence person is acceptance of failure as well because they, they know what to do. They, they know that they've got to take an action, they've got to um, fail at it or not, and they've got to uh, learn from it. So... A lot, a massive misconception with self-confidence people is they they never fail, they they they, they never fail, they, they they never do wrong, they just do something once and they get it perfect every time. And that's that's crap. That that doesn't happen. A self-confidence person can actually understand and realise actually, do you know what? I'm going to try something new. I'm going to take action, and it's probably going to fail because I've never done it before. Those of you that got kids and they fall down, that there are I don't know when kids start walking, eight months or one year old, and they they can't they can't walk yet. And the, the parent, as a parent, you don't go, oh, it's okay, my kid's just not a walker. It's okay, it's fine. Uh, the kid just keeps on going. The baby keeps on going, keeps on trying to trying to learn and, and failing and falling on their bow and falling on their face. And eventually they get it. They use things to stand up and they pull themselves up and they get the strength in their legs and the coordination to learn to do that, which is cool, right? Let's go on to the how then. Physiology. So our physiology controls our state and our state controls our physiology. It's a massive paradox. But if you were to go into a room uh, with your head held high, head up, looking, gain, gaining eye contact, shoulders back, nice long strides, you're going to come across as confident. You're going to feel confident. In fact, everyone do it here now. If you're watching this, just smile. Just smile. Just smile. Just give me the most outrageous smile you possibly can with your shoulders back. <laughs> and that physiology is going to change your state. It's going to change what you're thinking. Now, just think of a really sad thought. Think of the worst thing um, that you've been through recently this year and just think about it and just you don't have to do it now just do it another time and just notice your physiology notice what happens to your shoulders to your to your head um, to your to your even your heart rate and then think of something happy so you get out of that state body language is really really important so when we are expressing ourselves, we like to be tall we like to have our head high we have our we have constant eye contact with be assertive and another key point to be assertive is actually to have good tonality. Now, when we're talking about communication, only 7% is words, 38% is tonality, and 55% is body language. So we've covered body language, stand tall, nice big stride, shoulders back, eye contact. Tonality is key. So I don't really want you to, if I was a leader, I don't want you to you know, talk, hey, hey guys, how are you? Um, yeah, uh, so I'm doing confidence today. Uh, see the difference? It's kind of uh, it's like I've managed to keep eye contact with that spot right just there throughout the whole. Well, I try and think the whole thing. <laughs> obviously, not I'm not like a robot or anything like that. But obviously, my shoulders are kind of back. I would be if I wasn't holding this phone. My arm is killing me, by the way. 
Eye contact, shoulders back, nice big projecting voice, make it nice and clear. So physiology, tonality, and the last one, affirmation. Look at Muhammad Ali, what did he do? I am the greatest, I am the greatest. He kept telling himself that every single day, not to put other people down. Yeah, I guess there's a little bit of arrogance in that because he was you know, one of the best of the best at the time. However, he kept telling himself that. He kept waking up every morning to say, I am the greatest, I can do the best thing I can possibly be, I'm the best I can be. So my thought for today, just to finish it off, is for you guys to, <laughs> sounds wishy-washy, just to believe in yourself. So let's revisit that. To summarize, we've got the why. So why do we need to be confident? Number one, to instruct. Number two, for leadership. And number three, for positive thinking. They're, 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 it all helps, it all helps those things just there. The difference between confidence and self-confidence, which is key, and the how. So how, body language, tonality in our voice, and affirmation. So keep telling yourself that. You can wake up in the morning and just say, you're amazing, well done, you've managed to deal with this, I'm just going to pluck something out of the air. You, uh, okay, fine, a client, a, re, a client of mine recently managed to deal with her son's alcohol the loss of a partner. You're amazing. You're fucking, you're amazing. You're resilient. You, you keep on going. You keep on waking up in the morning. Yeah, we're going to have those tough times. But you know what? We, if you go, you go to the gym, you're not going to lift the same 12 kilogram, the same 8K every single time, aren't you? You're going to go up and higher. You're going to increase your reps. You're going to build. You're going to put on resistance to get better, to grow. That's what we're doing with our mind. You have to put on resistance. We're going to have to face challenges to grow, to become better. So if I could leave you with a message about confidence now, it would be, don't bully yourself. There's enough people in this world that are telling you you can't do something, that are putting you down to make themselves feel better. Don't do it to yourself. Confidence starts within. So that's what I want you to start doing. In fact, I want you to give yourself a little routine in the morning, okay? Here's your homework. Your homework is to give yourself a routine. I would like you to, number one, Think of three things that you're grateful for, anything in the world. And number two, I would like you to think of three things that you're proud of yourself for. I was grateful for my house. I'm grateful for having my friends. I'm, I've, recently, I've had such amazing support of my friends, and I love them for that so much. Weird, but oxygen. <laughs> we didn't have oxygen, we'd be screwed, right? That gives us life. And it's the things we take for granted. And my personal traits are curiosity. I'm, I love my curiosity. Number two, my resilience. Three, my confidence. Uh, so I'm going to leave you with that today, guys. I know it's a lot of information. I'm going to post this on three social medias, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So, guys, a little bit of confidence just there. Think of the why. Think of the why. Think of the how. And think about how it's going to make your life better. Guys, have a sweet day. From me, peace out.